Hey guys, this is episode one of Mind of the Streamer. I was so stoked to do this, and we really dove right into it um, with a really, really great first participant of, uh, first interviewee of the series. I want uh, to preface this by saying I did not do a good job with, um, with managing the Discord audio during this, so... There's a lot of bat. There's some muffling in the background. Please just try to <laughs> look past that because we're gonna fix that in the future. I probably need to get a better microphone anyway because I just use a headset right now. So um, I am gonna look into that. But basically, the Discord audio wasn't loud enough, so I had to turn him up a bunch and turn me down a bunch. But basically, uh, you can hear me breathing a little bit. So <coughs> yeah. Okay. Well. This is episode one of Mind of the Streamer, and I am really, really lucky to have an absolute legend with me here today. Oh, you. And his name's Wolkie. Um, right. So, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing well. I ate a pizza. I'm kind of drowsy, so... Otherwise, <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> about you? That's great. I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. A uh, lot, of, lot of stuff going on, you know. So you you are from Germany. I know you're also part Turkish. Yes. So did you uh, did you grow up in Germany? Yes, I've been born and raised in Germany. You were born and raised in Germany. Okay. Yeah. Uh it was really great uh to uh to get to know you and I think the first time it was kind of crazy because I had just started doing some runs in DFG. Like, I had really, really just started. So, like, mm. I just wanted to get... I really just wanted to get the wrong warp down. And I think you actually... You basically taught me... You showed me the the fog uh, cue and a lot of stuff like that. And you were a huge part in, in helping me start to uh, speedrun Ocarina of Time in a way that was actually sort of legitimate. Um, oh, nice. So, do you do you like doing that? Do you is that something that you do often, where you'll really try to like help somebody else out? Do you go into a lot of streams and maybe with someone who is? I'll go into a little bit more later. Uh, yeah. Some of your times and uh, how uh, you you have some really really great times in a couple of categories. Um, but do you like to help other? kind of help out the little guy, somebody who might be struggling or is at kind of a lower tier than you, uh, maybe not just even in, in Ocarina of Time or in Melee, but are you, do you like doing that? Is, something, is that something you consider yourself, you like helping people um, out like that? The general answer is basically yes. Not only in Ocarina of Time, I spend a lot of time teaching music and if you're speaking in like video game territory, also like Melee. Um, also, when I started streaming, I got helped a bunch by different Ocarina of Time speedrunners also. So it was like a nice feeling and mutual feeling of like, ah, oh, this is a nice community that in case somebody struggles with some something because the resources are kind of wonky because it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to Google stuff and find stuff out. It's not like I go around like on a mission right. to, the, to people about the game, but um, I really love exchanging and talking about the game itself. Or in general, I like talking about Melee. I like to be coach obviously in melee and like to coach other people who are not as good as me also it's a nice feeling of like giving and taking i want to i want to track back a little bit uh so you really started streaming a lot when the whole covid outbreak thing started yeah. correct um yeah. so what what made you want to stream and what made you want to really like get into ocarina of time and and melee is are these so and I, we are, we also talked about this a little bit like ocarina of time you kind of you kind of picked up pretty recently you may have played it a little bit before but is that the same thing with melee and you know just why uh yeah go into i've been like a long time twitch user and i mostly watched like ocarina of times or speedruns in general i found them very entertaining I discovered Melee as a spectator in 2015. Actually. Okay. Um, I just started to play it in like mid 2018 in terms of like I want to learn it in a way to be able to compete in tournament also. Right. But the situation was um, I got a microphone and a webcam and then I thought, you know what? Might as well stream with it. And my plan was originally to just stream Melee because it was like my main priority. Yeah. It was like basically the only game I play. I started to stream and I was like, something clicked in my mind. 
where I was like, oh, this might be fun. Somebody, yeah, somebody you, who I know in real life actually streams on a platform which I only use to watch people. So why don't try it myself so we can like hang out in each other's chat and stuff because it was kind of fun to just be like one person in like my chat room and then like two homies there. And so I never considered like getting full time as in compensation for like during lockdown not having to work because I actually make my living being a musician, which is super tough this year. And of course, yeah. yeah. And now the Wolky S emote is an official thing. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm I I'm know, I'm know. glad that you started streaming just for that emote. I think. <laughs> I um, oh, I mean, it's great. I mean, I if any. Never imagined it's it's a reason enough to subscribe to you i mean oh damn <laughs> what what are your goals now you know so you stream so you stream obviously you stream ocarina of time and melee i've seen you play melee you're very very good at it you play some of the top players in the world um in the world it would be a stretch but uh, well who who's the toughest player you've played who's the toughest player that you've played against the toughest player I ever encountered was Nicky. Um, he is the number one player in Germany because he lives in my in, in the same city as I. So he's like technically the only top hundred player in the world I played in tournament. Have you ever beaten him? No, not even close. <laughs> Competing start at the beginning of the year in like uh, February, beginning of the February. So it it didn't take long to like me sitting there again without having the opportunity to compete because like the lockdown happened right. in March. Right. Played like some little tournaments nearby me, and I think I re was registered for like a little bit bigger of a tournament in northern Germany. And then it and just happened. Uh, yeah, it's the worst. It's like, fuck. Well, hey man. <laughs> no, it's it, you're good. Just I mean, keep practicing, man. I mean, if it you, you want, yeah. I'm assuming you you want to keep competing and and keep trying to get better. And is that really your goal with melee? Is it like just kind of see how far you can go and try to actually win a tournament? Yeah, that's basically it in terms of like, I want to see how far I can go. Yeah. I don't really have like a terms of goal. Like I want to be so-and-so. I want to be like a top 15 player in the world. I mean, it's super healthy to have that mindset, but I kind of have like um, my own approach in terms of like, I just want to see what I can get out of myself if I devote myself to it. Let's see what happens. Is it kind of similar like that with Ocarina of Time? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So I don't want to be like, um, don't strive to world record. I mean, it would be cool, obviously, um, but uh, I just want to see how how far I can get in terms of like potential and just pouring in time and a little bit of effort, what can happen with myself. I don't want to put too much pressure on myself, and at the end of the day, I still want to have fun. I think that's a, yeah, that's a great yeah. mindset. If I, if I realize I don't enjoy myself during the progress anymore, then it's like, um, I probably would stop. You got to have fun with it. Of course, yeah, that's, that's super important. It's like sometimes you can be super competitive by nature, but for myself, it's like I like being the like being competitive and also enjoying the, the the fun side of it. And I think that's something that's really great about you as a streamer is that you have this really um, you have this really cool personality, and like obviously, uh, and you can be you can be kind of goofy and like um, I don't know, you're very you're very uh, interactive with your chat, very uplifting, but then. You know, when that PB pace comes on, you kind of, you know, we all know that feeling. Maybe minimize the Twitch chat, and then you got your game face on. Um, but you know, is that that competitive edge that kind of comes on when I don't know, maybe you're in a close melee game, or you're in a tournament, or you're almost PBing. You know, because do you feel like that just comes naturally to you? I try to at least. Um, in 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 situations where it's like. I have a close tournament set where I almost win, and like if I'm on PB pace, it's um, it also gets to me in terms of like nerves. It's like oh my god, we get there, and it's like your heart starts pounding, you get like super focus up. So um, it's not like I'm like a natural talent of like all right now I'm in the zone. It's so and so. It's like um, I feel like I can deal with nerve very well because I'm. I'm if you go back to like music, I I've been performing since I'm like 13 to be honest. So the biggest deal with like performing is like um, dealing with stage fright and stage nerves. I'm used to being like stress situation, stress situations yeah. just because of like my profession actually, like right. music where people watch you and just maybe even judge you. Online. I think that's really neat that perhaps, you know, being a musician, doing things where you're being judged and 
uh, you know, you're in sort of a competitive space that probably that definitely carries over to what you're doing now with streaming with melee and, and with Ocarina of mm. Time and trying to improve. A lot of parallels yeah. actually between music and video games, if I may say so. A lot of my own approaches I use for like the speedrun stuff and like learning melee. Actually, I uh, translated over from music, like how to build muscle memory, how does it work psychologically, how do I keep up a routine, discipline to like um, just repeat movements because a lot of like technical aspects of playing an instrument is like repetition and understanding the mechanics behind it. And in the same way, it's like I applied all that knowledge I learned during my studies uh, in melee and also Ocarina of Time. Like, how do I want to do this stuff? How do I get it down and how do I execute it? Um, in a kind of same way mentally. So that's very interesting. There's a lot of parallels for me between like music and video games. Damn. That's really cool. Um, because if, I mean, all right, so you have a, a 131.51 GSR, which I know you're slightly less proud of, but oh, still, it. okay, for people who, for people who don't know what GSR is, it's Ganondorf source requirement, right? So what are the items you need? Um, the items are bold, you need magic, you need, um, light, no, sorry, you need shadow, medallion, spirit medallion. Right. Um, yeah, that's like the four bigger things to shoot down like Ganondorf and we pick up more items right. on the road for like different glitches and stuff. I mean, I think most people would, would, would think that's impressive. But but I know you're slightly more proud. You have a nineteen twenty one DFG, which is defeat Ganon. I'm a little bit more proud of that, but also That my word. <laughs> is top a hundred and uh I believe you're sixth in Germany. Uh for for that, which is pretty, oh, yeah. I don't even know that. I know I'm like currently like number seventy three or something. That's that's I like think. overall, but in your country, you're you're top ten. You really started this four or five months ago, and to have oh, yes. to have a sub twenty to be top a hundred, uh, I mean that's crazy. Is that not crazy? I guess so. I I mean, it's always a thing of like. Again, music, there's always somebody who is quicker and learner, learns faster and is improving on a higher rate. So it's not like I'm trying to put myself in a comparison in a way. I just know it's like, ah, there's so much time safe still. <laughs> I don't know. It's, um... Do you feel like you're too hard on yourself ever? Not really. It might be because the way I grew up yeah. in music, if you like super... I mean, obviously, you're, you're allowed to be proud of what you accomplished. Sure, of course. And obviously, it's super healthy in a way if you don't overdo it and so it becomes toxic. But in music, it's like if you go off stage and you're like, you're like damn, that was a really nice performance of myself. <laughs> I know it's not the same thing like what you were talking about, but it's really not well seen. Um, you're never allowed to like gloat about like your accomplishments in music in a way, mm. or at least a jazz scene. So I don't really consider thinking about like the stuff of like me being how, how well I do compared to other people. There are very few people in the world who can beat this game faster than you. And Ocarina of Time, I mean, the thing you have to realize is that it's considered one of the best games ever, period. And so like, obviously, you know, it's, it's hard to compare yourself to the, to the absolute number one person, but hey man i mean especially in in four or five months time of learning to run i think that's incredible and i think also i think how you compared um your music ability and some of the stuff with music to how that translates to speed running a little bit is really really cool so i think that's really interesting man um i i feel nothing <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um it's, uh... hey man <laughs> 1921 that's a really really good time do you want to you want to get better than that though are you do you still yes, i want to yeah desperately i'm working towards like a sub 19 right now so you're looking to kill the category it's over Dude. ocarina of time is dead <laughs> it's always good to know that you can improve right because that's why you keep streaming right that's why you keep playing the game if you have an absolutely perfect run then what's the chance that you're going to load up the game again and play that yeah, category, exactly. you know? It's not like it's not like I'm going to put my controller on the stage and be like, I'm retired. <laughs> I'm retired. That's it. 
It's yeah. over. I'm gonna put my GameCube controller in that glass case on the wall. <laughs> Frame it, sign it, <laughs> with the time. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. What, in your opinion, is the toughest glitch uh, in either the category uh, GSR or or DFG, or if there's another a, a, a speedrun related glitch? What is the toughest for you to pull off um, during a run? Uh, defeat Ganon, which I'm working on right now, is Insta Clip, which is, uh, it's super hard, but it makes it harder in terms of in the context of the of the run because it's like towards the complete end, uh, and it's there are RNG elements involved where you like get a hess from a falling rock which is spawned randomly. So right now, for anybody who is doing speedruns in any game, really, I mean it's it's a frustrating field, right? When you when when a run dies, um, screwing up a glitch, um, it's not easy, man. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, and you always get people in the chat, and uh, so I don't. I think some people don't quite, don't quite get it. You know, when you've worked so hard. I mean, you've put a lot of time into learning glitches for Ocarina of Time, right? Um, what What would be some advice that you would give a speedrunner who is putting a lot of time into a game, and they're getting really frustrated trying to PB or trying to get somewhere in the leaderboards to just keep persevering, keep going, and, and keep trying to achieve that goal that they're going for. Our only advice is like reflect. It's always the thing mm. that comes down. So just think about uh, outside. The, just look from the outside what you're doing and reflect and think about it. Not don't just go in, intuitive about it in a way. Yeah, that was such a good answer, dude. Wow, what a what a really great like first episode of the series. And uh, this just made me realize that this was such a good idea to do this. Um, because I think there's a lot about streamers, um, and about people who speedrun or what, like whatever, whatever game they play. And it's like, there's so much cool background information and like relatability where it's like, oh, you know, something that I did in life, like, I guess like IRL or whatever, like how that translates to what you do now and like stuff like that. Like, there's always new things that you learn about someone who, you know, for most people is just right. They come into your stream and, you know, you have your webcam up and you're playing a game. But other than that, they might not know that much about you, or where you come from and stuff. So I think this is really, really cool. So hey, thank you so much for all the nice words. Hey, man. Awesome. Hey, man. I, I, I mean it. To learn a, a ton, but it's always nice to hear like uh, some compliments, I guess. So thank you so much for that. Also, thank you for having me. Of course. Of course. Yeah. I want to thank you guys for watching. This was a really, really amazing experience. I am going to put Wolke's Twitch channel down in the description of this video. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I really look forward to fine-tuning this series and making it something that's slightly more professional, more, um, obviously, the audio, making the audio better and fixing that. But um, for right now, I had a lot of fun doing that, and so I hope you guys enjoyed.